Hello, today I'm going to show you how easy it is to use SC Stream to do an initial assessment of wind flow around a building from the point of view of pedestrians. We have a concept for a library building and what we're concerned about is uh, wind flow being ducted through underneath the extended wings here and what the effect might be on pedestrians. So we open SC Stream and go into the preprocessor. It's a, a wizard driven application so by clicking on import CAD data it will hold our hand through setting up most of the rest of the model. So we go and read um, the CAD file which I've got as a parasolid but many other formats are supported. Um, so I'll open that and click on to the next phase. So set the units to meters um, and it tells us that the building uh, envelope is uh, 91 by 71 by 32 meters. We need to sit that within a virtual wind tunnel uh, and make allowances above to either sides upstream and downstream um, to give us uh, a properly converged flow. An organization funded by the European Union has looked into this to make some recommendations. Uh, if we have a building that is uh, uh, W units wide and H units high we can set the wind tunnel to be uh, 6H units high, we need a 5H units upstream and a 15H units downstream and then on the width we need uh, 2.3 times the width either side. So going back into uh, SC stream we can just choose to ex extend our surroundings. So upstream we need about 160 metres, downstream 480 metres, then either side we're looking at uh, 165 more or less and then uh, on the Z we're going to go up to 200 meters. Let's quickly preview that. We can see the building sitting within the virtual wind tunnel there. We go next. It's, it's warning us that we have quite a large volume but uh, we, we needn't worry about that as the software is uh, quite efficient with regards to use of memory. It's asking us what domains we need to solve. We're, we're obviously interested in a flow analysis. We have turbulent effects going on. There's a number of turbulence models, but we're going to leave it with the, the default for speed. Uh, we're not actually interested in any heat effects, so we can turn that off to reduce the computation. Next, it's asking some questions about heat, so we can skip over that. And then we move on to the purpose of the analysis. We're looking at external flow of winds through buildings, the next and it's asking us questions about the actual wind. Um, we're going to model a west wind. Uh, the, the upstream fetch of the wind tunnel we can simulate uh, different uh, layouts here. So we can have um, small buildings and then using the data from the, the Met Office who measure and provide data at uh, 10 minutes reference height we can set a 40 mile per hour So, and then we just confirm all that, and it gives us the same warning about the mesh again. So there we are, we have the model sighted within the wind tunnel. Just double click on it, it tells us what the part name was, it was read in, it tells us where it's located, uh, and tells us that we're using it as an obstacle type, which is what we want. We go into the next wizard, which is the condition setting. So we're going to run a steady state analysis. Uh, there's the turbulence model that we chose, so we can skip through most of these options as they are, uh, the default settings are, are perfectly adequate for what we want to do. And we get into flow boundaries. So you can see um, on the model that we have uh, an arrow indicating the, the wind inflow and a, a double headed arrow here indicating that airflow can go into or out of that, um, which is reflected here. We have a, a fixed static pressure at that end, um, and at this end we have the wind flow in, and there's all the parameters I put in earlier on. Uh, the next setting is the wall boundaries, so we have free slip on the two sides and the top, and then we have a no slip condition um, that uses a power law to represent the, the drag of the wind flowing over the ground. Uh, no symmetry conditions in this case. Skip forward some more. 
I'm going to make a detailed setting but only to change one thing which is the number of cycles as often 100 cycles isn't enough for the job to converge adequately um, all of these settings we can leave the same one of the things we can do is quite handy is we can create monitor points within the model uh, to actually look at things like velocity and how they evolve during the convergence of the model I'm not going to do this for the purposes of that um, we'll just look at global velocities and pressures so we skip through everything looks okay we click accept to finish the last thing we need is a mesh on the model now SC stream uses a regular uh, hexahedral mesh that is orthogonal to the global coordinate system in terms of the mesh size the guidelines from the cost study and indicate that you want to use at least 10 elements across the face of a part. Um, in this case those faces here on the wings are about 20 meters so we could use a 2 meter by 2 meter in the XY plane. The other guidance they give in the Z direction i.e. the vertical direction is you want to have at least three elements at the height you wish to measure the velocity to the height. So we want to measure velocity at 1.5 meters off the ground so we need a mesh size of 0.5 meters to give us the, the, that measured at the third element this this reduces um, boundary layer effects or boundary effects from the, the approximation of the, the surface boundary there so I can hit the gridding button there and it gives me um, an assessment that there will be just shy of a million cells or elements in this model which is is not um, an unrealistic number to run on my laptop. Uh, the software scales beautifully up to multiple processors so you can have many many more elements than that quite happily. Um, you can see what it's done is picked up the various uh, hard features in the model and uh, apportioned the mesh accordingly and then so we end up with a fine mesh suitable around the uh, detail and geometry and then there's a, uh, a geometric ratio that allows it to scale out the elements as you move away to areas where you're not so interested. I could spend more time uh, making a detailed mesh around here but what we want is an initial assessment. I mesh it at that to create the full 3D uh, meshed uh, cube and then I save the model and I execute the solver. takes me through to the solver GUI and I hit execute and confirm that I want to run it and then it offers me some display to see how my analysis is progressing so the principal display is convergence status where it's looking at the, the turbulence energy in the system the turbulence dissipation rate and the velocity of uh, uh, within the system um, and it's looking for a, a maximum change between one cycle and the next of 10 to the minus 4 which is shown as a log scale on here so when the three traces all drop below the minus 4 mark the analysis is considered to com have converged you can sanity check that by looking for instance at the uh, velocity min and max and you'll see that these gradually uh, converge and become asymptotic to the to the horizontal axis there so this will run for a little time so we'll resume once that has completed. Okay, so the analysis is completed. That took uh, about 23 minutes and 269 cycles. Um, clearly, more mesh would have taken a longer run time, but that's still 23 minutes. It is perfectly acceptable time to wait for initial assessment. So if you see the uh, convergence status, waited until we had uh, all three dipped below the 10 to the minus 4. If we look at the velocity, you can see the minimum and maximum velocities in the system converged, uh, also the pressure. So we can close that and go into the post-processor. So I have here, just turn off some of those labels. So we have a plane cutting through 
our, our volume. And what we want to do is look at the velocity at 1.5 meters off the ground. So we set that to 1.5 meters. You see that's there. And then what we can do is we can plot either a contour plot of total velocity, which if we zoom in here, just change the color bar to make the text black. You can see with velocity between 0 and uh, 37 meters per second, so you can see that there is um, it's quite low velocities mainly through here. There's a bit of a, a higher peak around that corner, but the, the definite area for concern is, is up under here, underneath that first extending wing. We can look at the actual vectors of um, velocity instead. So spin around to the z direction and I just change the arrow lengths down a little bit you can see basically the, the direction the wind's actually blowing in at each point through there so you can see there is a, a speed up as the wind ducks underneath that, that first um, first wing there. Another thing we can look at um, is the, the swirl down between the wings here. So if we go back to the orientation there and we want to look at it normal to the y direction, and we're going to go an auto move. So we're going to go from the position of uh, y minus 10, looking in the y direction, and then up to y equals 80, looking in the y direction, and then we're going to, uh, let's, let's take 500 slices through that, and then go look, look in the y direction, go through, and you can see plane cuts through, you can see the change in the direction of the wind as it slices across the building. There's obviously much more output we can take from this and we'd want to ensure that the, the analysis had converged. Um, we do that by refining the mesh and rerunning just to make sure there isn't a, a, a big change in the key results we're looking at. But that, in overview, is an example of how simple it is to set up and run one of these kind of analyses. Thank you very much.